G'day and welcome to another installation from uh, Off The Rails. I'm Chris and uh, I'm going to be building this Pike Stuff engine house today. I haven't recorded anything like this before. Um, <laughs> it, uh, it was a bit of a bit of a play around but uh, I managed to uh, get through it. I just borrowed one of the kids uh, camera stands and gave it a crack. A bit of a backlight. Um, you can see we've pulled everything apart here. I come with decent instructions, but uh, not much picture reference. Here you can see some smaller details, like a guttering you'll have to look out for later in the build. Uh, the roof, well, well manufactured. Um, comes with pre-cut. Uh, score marks in the back for further assembly. Uh, has a ridge under one side that uh, indicates where it should join the gutters. Um, they fit together to leave a, a small gap. Anyway, that's uh, a little bit important for later on. Uh, the, these marks here uh, make it easier to cut. This is a, a, a kit bash series from pike stuff um, you'll find that a lot of the stuff's pretty well made and uh, already has uh, pre pre-printed or pre-cut scored sections so you can uh, pretty much create whatever sort of s size or diameter that fits together properly a modular style uh, building and you see here i've sped it up a bit where we uh, cleaned up the edges and the parts that we needed to start on uh, cutting the end walls. I started with the end walls, um, getting the door in the right spot was, was fairly simple, um, followed by the instructions there, uh, it, you line up your uh, flashing with one of these uh, ridge marks, I don't know if you can see that, on the raised section of the wall and uh, they're pretty much um, create a, a, a good guide to where you need to cut for your flashing or your door, door reveal. Just carefully mark which, which line you need and uh, I, I use the uh, roller door as a straight edge as well. Uh, there, there, there's, a, there's a roller door section you can actually cut and shorten to allow like a, uh, a, uh, a sort of half door down look if you're going to put a few doors on or, or not have the shed as, a, as an open structure. Um, scored everything a million times. It's quite solid plastic. Get yourself a nice sharp exacto knife. Um, here I just bend bend the structure a little bit after scoring the front, and that allows you to see where you can cut it in the back to easily cut cut through and uh, remove the panel you don't need. Take your time. It's, uh, it's worth a coffee or two, maybe a few donuts, some would say. So I uh, obviously cleaned everything up. I, I, I use a fine sand 120 sandpaper. It comes, comes as a, uh, a kit from some of the small model uh, outlets. Just checking everything fits. And then uh, I go ahead to uh, just remove all the other openings uh, after making sure it's all perfect. Just make sure all your parts fit properly. Just take your time. Better to cut the hole a little bit smaller than um, that needs to be. You can always file it out. Uh, there's nothing worse than uh, cutting it too big, and, and then your, um, your little insert just falls through, and you get with all kinds of problems with trying to re-glue a bit of plastic back on, and blah blah blah. So, so I've cut all the uh, holes in here. Here I'm just checking to make sure I've sanded everything down so there's nothing sticking out. On the ends there's a uh, 
there's a part which uh, marries in with the gables. Um, just make sure they are on either end of the building. Uh, if you sand them off, it could cause you a bit of trouble later. So we've got to the spot where we need to um, cut our roof to the right size. I um, just checked the preset score marks on the back of the the roofing uh, sections to match the ridge, so that uh, you know it aligns with what we're going to build. We're going to build the whole engine house as it is, like uh, using all the parts. Um, we've only adjusted a few doors, so. Uh, you just cutting cutting everything to fit and cleaning it up, making sure all the edges are clean. Um, quite a simple process. Uh, the kit's very easy to work with. Um, there, there was a one thing I did wrong, uh, which we'll touch on later on, but uh, it wasn't a big deal. So, uh, I start gluing all my walls together, making sure they're all nice and nice and clean on the ends as well um, they provide some structural supports which I haven't shown you guys yet but I'll come into it in, in a sec if we are glue on the back just to stiffen everything up uh, I might do it a bit differently to everyone else look I haven't built one of these structures before I uh, just dug it out of the box and thought here we go let's put a camera on it um, Like I said, it was it was pretty self-explanatory and, and very easy to work with. I, I ended up using a, a bit of scrap, a bit that I cut out of the actual uh, doorway and the, the end wall to make uh, a couple of 15 millimeter uh, strips to reinforce the joints. Um, I'd say you could use the the pre-molded stuff off the uh, injection to uh, reinforce them laterally. Uh, I've gone horizontal and then at the roof I've, I've put a, uh, a piece across which uh, made it quite stiff um, and, and strong. I'm using the Rebel Professional glue. I've never seen have any problems with this uh, glue. It, it welds pretty well. Um, it's what I've grown up with. Uh, one day I might, might experiment with some different stuff. So, uh, they say if it, if it ain't broken, don't fix it. So I, I've been plodding along with my original modeling kit for all these years. This, this little bottle's lasted me for oh, almost 20 years now. It's still good, still works. Let's give it a bit of a shake. Might need to clean the nozzle out every now and then. Okay, you can see here I'm uh, gluing these pieces on. Just put a little bit of pressure on them uh, just to keep them flat. Now, uh, now to join all the roof pieces together, very similar way. Uh, I just uh, butt joint them, the glue. And then I reinforce them with the, uh, the strips they've provided just to stiffen the roof up a little bit. Allowing it to dry. These are the pre molded strips they provide. And just look, look for something nice and long or use a couple of them. There's plenty of them there. They might give you about 20 or 25 of them. More than married. We'll touch on one thing later on in the uh, program that you, you really need to uh, acknowledge before you glue these reinforcements on. Yeah, I, I made a mistake here. Just a small one, no big deal.
here I am just checking, um, this is how I hold my buildings together, find a couple of lucky bands and I'll just see if they fit around the perimeter of the building. Um, you can uh, sink or swim with this one, uh, it, it, it takes a bit of practice, but there are easy ways to do it. Um, a lot of people use pre-made kit, kit blocks and uh, you know, one, two, threes and all that kind of stuff. Um, this is how I do it, uh, so I glue the ends, I set the building up where it's uh, supposed to be. Uh, this glue does well to soften and adhere very quickly. And then um, very gently, carefully holding the tops of the uh, building, I, I let the elastic band slide down around the four corners. I've had uh, mixed results with this. Um, if you don't hold your fingers close enough, it can slap and pull the building to pieces. But uh, as long as you've got everything cleaned up properly, um, it seems to hold really well. You just want to double check everything's exactly in the right spot. And soon you'll see I'll be checking for square. Make sure this building doesn't doesn't dry up uh, or set uh, in an odd, odd shape. And making sure it doesn't pull the corners out, out of, out of uh, square out of position. Just a quick check using uh, one of the roof sheets to um, make sure uh, everything's in the right spot. But, uh, if your roof sheets aren't square then you, you're going to be in a bit of trouble later on anyway so make sure you've cleaned everything up properly. Test fit now. I'm going to test fit the, uh, the pre-made sections. There's a, a, a ridge that needs to be glued into these two sections. So we're just uh, making sure it all fits before we uh, shove it together. Here you can see me uh, just checking, checking to make sure. Uh, the ridge sections are nice and tidied up and looking for um, any imperfections. Uh, there is a recess section that needs to go over the gable end at, at the top to uh, make sure they do not end up uh, flush. They, they tend to overlap the wall. Uh, once again, I just used uh, the pre-made uh, the reinforcing sections, um, nice long lengths. Um, clean them up, make sure they fit before everything went together. Best thing you can do um, is make sure you, you clean any any imperfections off your plastic. Um, I found that's sort of your key key to having a, a good result in these things these things um, once I um, have everything uh, where I want it I, uh, I use a couple of uh, bamboo sections uh, skewers to um, give it a bit of a bit of an angle and this is where I've, I've totally stuffed up I've realized that I put the the reinforcing sections on the roof sheets too close to the edge and the rebate on the ridge is now fouling and won't allow me to glue them flush. Uh, I end up just getting a straight edge. Um, so the first thing I could find was uh, a soldering iron stand. And uh, as you'll see in a bit, I used it to um, slice a millimeter or so off the back of the roof sheet so that we could allow for the ridge to be uh, jointed properly. So, uh, she was quite lucky here that the glue hadn't totally set. And, uh, I, could, I could easily scrape it off. These things happen. 
for anyone else that wants to have a crack at this kit, yeah, don't put your um, braces near the edge. Give it a good 5-10mm five, five, from any edge, just in case you change your mind or change the design later on. This little bit gets anyone out of the proverbial crap later on. So I use a um, couple of uh, skewers to try and get the uh, the grade on the roof. So if I'd uh, glued this flat, um, it wouldn't have sat properly. Obviously there, there's a slope on each side of the roof, very little, but um, there is a slope there. So I used a couple of skewers underneath the ridge section to um, to give it that little bit. Here I've got the roof on. Um, it's just sat on uh, statically. I haven't actually glued it on and I'm just about to uh, get to the paint can basically and this is what it looks like with all the pieces ready ready to be painted and roof separate there are some parts that need to go on the roof um, a little bit of adjustment needed with the edge of my roof it wasn't quite square we'll sort that out Magic um, white primer on our, uh, on our walls. Amazing what these time machines can do. Just uh, instant finishes. Um, also, we got to uh, paint all the doors and the surrounds. Like uh, chose not to bother with the um, airbrush. Um, so I just painted most of the parts, just with a brush, which it wasn't, wasn't too bad. Um, the roof fence that go with the roof, I haven't yet uh, sprayed the roof. Uh, they're pretty simple to, to apply. Um, just, once again, just make sure your edges are clean. Uh, you, you don't have to put these on. Um, there's other kits, so I've got a Walther's roof structures kit. Uh, that has other things you can add like dust extractors and air vents and whatnot, electrical boxes. Um, if, if you're gonna you know create something a little bit different, you know, if there was a bit of an office block inside here there'd obviously be air conditioning. Um, you think about these things, you know what would you find in a building? What else would be there to keep everything going? Uh, stuck all my um, smaller bits into uh, rolled up uh, masking tape. This is me. Uh, this is how I paint the small bits, so I don't have to hold them with my fingers. Uh, it's uh, a lot easier than you know, using a pair of tweezers. Uh, so you can also uh, airbrush this way as well. Uh, just make sure you get all the edges. Little paint and away I go. Two coats and these these parts actually come up pretty good. Try not to uh, paint the sections that are. Uh, uh, getting glue applied to them. Uh, we can always touch that up later. Uh, magic, is everything glued in? Voila! Nice and clean edges. Everything's nice and solid. The roof painted as well. 
pretty much complete and uh, ready for the dust and grime. I'm no, no expert at uh, this next segment, so um, bear with me. I, I just thought there'd be a lot of uh, engine soot and exhaust just starting engines in the shed, so I naturally filled up the air vents with black. Knock a series of uh, powders. Uh, went around and did a little bit of grime around the uh, edges of the gutters where they'd leaked or overflowed, just where the mold grows. So I added sections there as well, just sort of rubbed everything in. Um, also added a little bit of uh, colour, a bit of red in that as well, where, where rust or yeah, the sheets had started to degrade. Um, so you're usually quite um, ununiform. So you, you find it in just sections where, like, maybe the leaves had built up and it was overflowing near the downpipe. You notice in this section here, I, I hadn't actually added the downpipes yet. Um, I painted and installed them after all the weathering was done. Uh, it didn't, doesn't really matter which way you do it. Uh, it's a good idea to install the downpipes because it, it, it covers the joins in the walls. Um, so you, you don't see see that, that butt joint in the sections of the model. I'm very new to weathering. Uh, this is just splish splashing about and when it comes to weathering it's sort of how you want it anyway if, if you're happy with it it doesn't really matter but uh, you can always go over it again you, you can use your airbrush to spray a little bit of you know color back over it cover it up and then start again yeah the thing about weather is it happens over a long time so it really is layers anyway so more layers thin layers obviously but being a model but uh, more layers you sort of get on the, the better the weather is going to look anyway so, so, don't, so don't be afraid to go back over stuff you know it's it's, uh, it's not a big deal now here, here I'm surgically attaching these down pipes quite small but they really do add add to the building so make sure you chuck them on once everything was uh, attached I um, basically just coated the whole thing in a 50-50 um, thinners and wash material so an extra extra thin wash to set everything and it sort of brought everything together I'm pretty happy with it um, I've got I've got a pile of uh, those little leaves coming to add to the roof uh, rotten leaves where they get all bunched up in the roof um, hopefully uh, you enjoyed this series. Let's see how we go with the next one. Um, have fun and uh, maybe we get to see uh, what your version of the Pike Stuff engine house is. I'll, I'll see you later. Thanks. Thanks for watching.